I want to talk to you a little bit tonight and, and, and get to a few things, but I want to start off in the book of Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, and I want to read a verse of scripture there, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, glory to God. Isn't God good, amen? amen. Matthew four twenty-three. You know, and God's just supplying a baptismal site everywhere for us, amen? That's pretty good. <laughs> Matthew 4, 23. Listen to this scripture. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. I'm going to read that again. Jesus went about all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And I want you to notice preaching the good news of the kingdom. If you write things down, I want you to write down the kingdom because tonight we're going to talk about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And if you have a kingdom, you've got to have a king, and the king is Jesus. You can't have a kingdom without a king, and Jesus is king and Lord. The word kingdom is an abbreviation. It's a, it's a word, but it's an abbreviated word. It really means king's dominion. So when we read kingdom, we're actually talking about the Lord's authority, Amen. his kingdom's dominion, that he has dominion over everything. Glory to God. Dominion over sin, dominion over lack, dominion over sickness, dominion over disease, dominion over everything, glory to God. He is the king of the kingdom, amen? amen. And what's so powerful is he's inviting us into the kingdom, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to Matthew's gospel 9, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Let's read that again. Let's back it up with some more scripture. 9.35, Hallelujah. And Jesus went about all cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But he was, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said unto his disciples, the harvest is truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the harvest. I want you to notice a reason why that there's not as many healings and many deliverances today is because not very many people are preaching the kingdom. They're not preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. We have a king and his name is Jesus. And you and I live in a kingdom now called the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. How many of y'all believe that? Say amen. amen. We don't just live in the United States. We live in the kingdom of God. Amen. We live in the kingdom of heaven. And you're going to have to get faith in that. You're going to have to start believing that you, you sleep in the kingdom of God. You work in the kingdom of God. You may say, well, I work at this job or I work at this place. Well, you're going to have to believe you still work in the kingdom of God. Amen. That Wherever you are, the kingdom of heaven is there. Yeah. Wherever you are, the kingdom of God is there. Amen. How many of y'all agree with that? Say amen. amen. No matter where you go, no matter where you at, the kingdom of God. And if we believe that, you're going to see healings and miracles and blessings because when you preach the good news of the kingdom and you live in the good news of the kingdom and you believe the good news of the kingdom, that means you're under the authority of the king. Yeah. You're his ambassador. You know? I've been to a lot of foreign countries, and I, I, when I was in Uganda and Kenya, I had to go to the American embassy. And when I got to the American embassies there, there were Marines outside. When I stepped onto that embassy, I was stepping on United States soil. Even though that I was in a foreign country, right then I was on United States soil, and I was protected by the Constitution of the United States. I was protected by those Marines. I was protected by everything around that, even though that I was in a foreign country. 
That's the same thing in the kingdom of God. You might be here, you might be in Texas, you might be wherever you are tomorrow, but you're still in the kingdom of God. And that means you have all the rights and the privileges, the favor, the blessings, the authority, because you're not in the world, but not of the world. And now in Him you live, in Him you move, in Him you have your being. That's the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And when we live in that kingdom, we, we believe in that kingdom, we teach and preach that kingdom, that's the authority, and you're going to see healing signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, you will, you will be led by the Spirit in this. Somebody walks up to you and says, man, I'm sick. You said, you might ought to check yourself just to see because you got close to me and I got the kingdom of God in me. You might all just check yourself. You might all just check yourself because you got, you got close to me, glory to God, and I got the kingdom of God and you're getting close enough to me. Come on, somebody. You're getting close enough to me to get some of that on you in the name of Jesus. That's living in authority. That's living in authority. So let's go to Luke chapter 12, verse 32. We're going to give you some scriptures and I'm going to show you some things. Luke chapter 12. I want to lay this foundation to you. Luke chapter 12 and verse 32. Glory to God. This is, hang on to your hat if you got one on. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not. Fear not. Little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So God wants to give you his kingdom. God wants you to live in his kingdom. God wants you kingdom-minded, kingdom-conscious, that you are citizens of heaven. You're ambassadors for Jesus on this earth. You're our kings and priests unto God. And you live in the realm of the kingdom of God. Come on. Just like you know maybe your street address. Do you know you live in the kingdom of God? You live in the kingdom of light. You live in the kingdom of heaven right now. Glory to God. And it's God's pleasure. He wants to do it. He gets great pleasure in giving you everything that has to do with the kingdom. And he's the king of the kingdom. And that kingdom, that kingdom, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't fail. That economy is not failing. If you live in that kingdom, you're not going to have to be looking for a job. You're going to get you a job. If you live in that kingdom, you don't need to worry about the economy falling apart. You're living in the economy of the kingdom of God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. How many you with me? Say amen. You don't need to say, well, that sickness is going to take. No, that, that sickness down here in this earth might can do it to you. But in the kingdom of God, no weapon formed against me. I believe I'm going to be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Come on. So that's, that's what I want you to do. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Now give me just a little time. We're going to build this up just a little bit. Hallelujah. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1 verse 30. Colossians 1.30. Woo, there's not a 1.30, is there? Let's start in verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So when you got saved, you're no longer in the dark. You're now in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the king of the kingdom, and you are now translated. How many believe you've been translated into the kingdom of Jesus? Now, if you can believe that, if you can believe that, you are, no, you are in the world, but you're not of the world because you're in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You're in America, but you're not bound by what its economy is doing you're not bound by what's going around. You're now in the kingdom of his dear son. And Jesus is the king of his kingdom. Huh? 
And this is something you've got to understand about God. How many believe God never changes? How many y'all believe God never changes? So if I look at God, he never changes. He's a straight line. He never changes. And Jesus said, I always do those things that please the Father. So Jesus never changes. Come on. There's no shadow of turning in God. There's no shadow of turning in Jesus. It's just as straight. It's just as pure. It's just as holy. It's just as right. It's just, oh, it's awesome. Can you say amen? Now, here's what happens with us. If we're not careful, then we're not living the straight line. We are up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And our our spiritual EKG begins to look like our hearts are crazy. But when you believe God dwells in your heart by faith, Are you with me? Then no longer you're going to live up and down. You're not going to live up and down anymore. You're going to have to quit living up and down because this up and down means you still are connected to the natural things of this world. That the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. That you're still going through all kinds of feelings and emotions and say, no, I'm not. If God doesn't change, Jesus doesn't change, the kingdom doesn't change, then I'm not going to change except from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to let what somebody goes through or what I'm going through get me up and then get me down. Come on. If I want to succeed, I don't want the devil again seeing these hills in my life anymore, seeing these valleys in my life anymore. I want him to see Christ in me, the hope of glory. Come on, somebody. I don't want this up and down business. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know the economy's like that? People are like that. Marriages are like that. Businesses are like that. But you don't have to be like that because Jesus is the king of your kingdom. And God doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change. His ways don't change. His work is perfect. Everything is perfect in God. Therefore, you can live that straight line of perfection in the name of Jesus. Be ye therefore perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect perfect come on are you with me now okay glory to God let's go to Matthew chapter 5 y'all with me now because I'm going to show you some three hindrances to this in a minute Matthew's gospel glory 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 that cake was good wasn't it I told that lady don't you put no more than a hundred prunes in that thing Amen. Sure got quiet in here, didn't it? Let's watch Celinda eat that bite. Glory to God. (laughs) Matthew chapter 5. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5. Glory to God. Verse number 20. Jesus is Lord. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You shall in no way, in no shape, in no form, in no blessing enter into the kingdom of God. You will not enter into his kingdom in blessing. You will not enter into his kingdom in health. You will not enter in his kingdom in the breakthroughs, the victories, everything God did unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. How many of y'all with me now? Say amen. So how does my righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Scribes and Pharisees tried to earn it by obeying the law. You receive yours By faith in Jesus Christ. Righteousness by faith is given to you as a gift from God that exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And when you realize that you can't earn this righteousness, 
It's not by debt. You can't do anything to get it. You receive it by faith. Now your righteousness, your right standing with God is greater than any scribe, any Pharisee, anybody, anywhere, and you have complete access into the kingdom of God and everything the kingdom of God offers you. How many y'all with me? Say amen. amen. How many y'all right now will tell me, I live in the kingdom of God? Come on, how many you with me right now? I live, I breathe, I move, I exist in the kingdom of God. Come on. Because that's a whole nother place. There's no darkness there. There's no defeat there. There's no, there's, no, there's no defeat at all. It's the kingdom of Jesus, and he's the king of that kingdom. The devil is not in the kingdom of God. He cannot get into the kingdom of God. He can't do it. He can't break through it, glory to God. Can't do a thing about the kingdom of God. And the reason why we have so many difficulties is that we got other little kingdoms rising up inside our lives sometimes. The kingdom of the past, the kingdom of failure, the kingdom of... Mm. I mean, y'all love me now, say amen. amen. All right, let's keep going. Matthew 6, 10. Oh, God is good. In the Lord's Prayer, everybody say the Lord's Prayer. How many of y'all love the Lord's Prayer? Oh, my God. Let's just, let's just look at the whole Lord's Prayer for a minute. We'll see some. Verse 7, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. This is 6, 10. 6, 7, I'm sorry. When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they'll be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. How many of y'all believe God knows what you have need of before you ask him? Amen. Ask. Seek, knock. You all agree with that? But watch this. I got to ask to get in all of this. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. You get it from me? Hallelujah. After this manner, verse 9, Therefore pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed or holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Say that with me. Your kingdom come. The first thing that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, we need that kingdom in our lives. We need everything that this kingdom is in our lives. We need everything that the kingdom offers us in our lives. Come on. Just like I'm a citizen of the United States of America and it's supposed to offer me certain things, right? But the kingdom of God is a sure thing because God is not a man that he should lie. Are you with me now? The first thing I'm to pray in the Lord's Prayer, the first thing he wanted me to learn how to pray was, Lord, I need your kingdom to come and be established in my life, established in my thinking, established in my home, established in everywhere in my life because where the kingdom is is the king's authority and the king's, the king's uh, uh, privileges and the king's blessings and everything the king gives you is in his kingdom. Amen. Oh, my God. Y'all agree with me right there? So I don't have to go and worry about it. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever your will is. Jesus said, I came not to do my own will, but I came to do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I see the Father say. That's where you want to go. You want to get to where you only do what God says for you to do and say what God says for you to say. And you'll, just get, you'll get unbelievably blessed. Amen. Amen. So thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's try that together. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, I was, I was, I was looking at how much manna or bread that the children of Israel got when they were in the wilderness for 40 years. 
So I, I went to some books and I began to go to different things. They received over one million tons of manna in 40 years. That's a lot of bread. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. But I noticed something I never noticed before. That bread, they had to go outside, find it, stoop down, pick it up, and labor to get it. Because in the old covenant, you had to labor to get anything from God. Jesus said, God, Moses did not give you that true bread from heaven. I am the true bread from heaven. So you and I don't have to labor for that bread. We don't have to go out there and bend down and pick it up. All we got to do is believe it. Are you with me? So give us this day. Now listen carefully to me. When you believe you're in the kingdom of God, every day for the rest of your life, there should be a blessing in that day. Listen, how many of you remember an apple a day will keep the doctor away? I'm going to tell you a blessing a day will keep everything away. How many of you understand that? You need to pray in this Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and Lord, every day I'm going to get a blessing. Every day I'm going to get a blessing. Try it with me. Every day I'm going to get a blessing. Come on. And you need to get your faith in that because I'm in the kingdom of God and God wants to bless me every day. Every day. I believe that the three and a half years Jesus was on the planet in his ministry, I believe he got a blessing every day. I believe every day Jesus was blessed with some kind of something or other. Every day. And I believe if you believe you're in the kingdom of God, you're not under the curse of the law, sweet baby. You're under the blessing. Now, let's just don't be real pretty in here right now and say, that sounds good. Let's believe it. Come on, let's, let's believe it. Come on, let's do it together. I believe it. How many of you believe in that blessing every day business? Come on, God wants to bless you. If God gave Israel bread every day, if God gave them quail every day, if God gave them a fire by day, a fire by night, and a cloud by day every day, that is in the old covenant. God wants to bless you every day in this kingdom. You're going to have to get it into your mind that in this kingdom, God's going to bless me every day. Because remember, the Lord never changes. He's a straight line. He's no shadow of turning. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're the people living this up and down business. Hallelujah. Hello. Y'all with me now? Let's keep going. Are we in Matthew 6? Matthew 6, 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. Y'all still with me? I'm going to give you three things that will stop. Ooh, that, I need a Hallelujah. That's not the best racer in the world, is it? Ah, I know, I see. Three things that will stop my blessings. Three things that will keep me from getting into the kingdom. Amen? Trudy, will you come up here real quick and, and clean that off for me and I'll write these down. Thank you. How many of you appreciate Miss Trudy? Yeah. Amen. Three things, y'all ready? I wrote these down today. I want to stay with them. The first one is rebellion. There can be no rebellion in this kingdom. How many ever had rebellion in your home? It wasn't fun at all, was it? Come on, have you ever seen rebellion in a marriage? It just wasn't fun at all. Have you ever seen rebellion at, at a workplace? It just isn't fun at all. Y'all agree with that? The one thing that we've got to do is we've got to watch 
Thank you, Trudy. She even erased my scriptures for the future. Glory to God. That's, a, that's how good Trudy is. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you got to be really specific with Trudy. Do this right here, Trudy. Everybody say rebellion. I won't. That's a good Texas word. I won't do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to believe it. I'm not going to do it. That's rebellion. I won't. I won't believe this. I won't do this. I won't act on this. If I'm in the kingdom of God, I've got to do what God wants me to do. I've got to believe just like he wants me to believe. i got to think just like he wants me to think. Did you know if you read the book of Philippians, you and I ought to be thinking the same thing sometimes? That's what it says, uh, that we all think the same things and speak the same things. What kind of home would you have if everybody was just thinking the same way? It'd be a blessing now, wouldn't it? What kind of work would you have if everybody was all thinking the same way about that business? It'd be pretty great, wouldn't it? But how many know that not everybody thinks the same way? In the kingdom of God, we have got to think the same way. In a church, we have got to think the same way. Are you right about it? How many listening to me say amen? amen? We've got to think the same way. Are you with me now? So if I've got, let's say I got, I got a picture today of Matt and Jody's little boy who went into the kitchen, got the lasagna out of the refrigerator and went into the carpet and started eating it with his hands. How many know that that's thinking different than his daddy and mama was thinking? <laughs> but I did love that picture. <laughs> he got in a little bit of trouble. So let's, let's just use Jody a little bit. Let's just talk about, let's say Jody's doing something and people look at it and realize that we've got to think the same way about Jody. All of us do. Instead of somebody saying, well, I don't like this and I don't like that. No, we're not that. We're not the world. We're the church. And we've got to think maturing and we've got to think blessing and we've got to think growth. And we got to think the best. We got to think things that are lovely. We got to think things that are pure. We got to think things that are honest and of a good report. Amen. You're right. Amen. You're right. And somebody comes in and they don't dress like everybody else. They don't have anything. But you and I got to think the same thing about them. And they come in and they're just a little bit messed up. But we got to think the same thing about them or we won't have an atmosphere for the miraculous to change them. This is living in the kingdom. Are you with me? So I, I, I've got to keep out any rebellion to God's way of doing a thing, in God's way of treating somebody, in God's way of maturing somebody, because how many of you know everybody's got the right to, to mature and grow in the Lord? Amen. You want to give God a crazy praise right there? Okay, the next one is resentment. Resentment. Did I get an amen somewhere? You got an old boy. Resentment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write out an explanation. Why is this happening to me? get you and your mind out of believing you're in the kingdom of God. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to my child? Why did this happen to my that? Why did this? Why is this? Why is this? It's the enemy building resentment, if he can, up on the inside of you. And resentment will keep you from receiving the kingdom of God because you can't live in resentment and receive the kingdom of God. Y'all accept this from me? 
So you see, that's the reason why the enemy has worked on some of your children, some of your finances already. He was doing stuff even before you ever even got saved so that after you got saved, he could keep some resentment somewhere in your life or in your family. Instead of rising up and believing, wait a minute, I'm in the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, I'm going to walk by faith and I'm not going to live resenting anything. Let's get out of it right now. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I, had, I wash myself in the blood of Jesus. And I get resentment out of me in Jesus' name. Come on, have me with me, say amen. amen. Come on, don't resent that coworker. Don't resent nobody. Don't resent anything. Don't resent anything at all. Don't resent nobody or nothing. Don't resent yourself. Don't resent something. Don't, don't let no resentment get on the inside of you. Why? Because that's the devil's way of keeping you believing. Wait a minute, I'm in the kingdom of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Wait a minute, I'm going to enjoy the kingdom of Almighty God. You can't enjoy God and live in resentment. Y'all agree with me there? I'm going to give you one more. Independence. Everybody say independence. Ooh, that's a big one. Several years ago, I was invited to preach a revival with another minister in Louisiana. He preached the first night, I preached the second night, he preached the third night, I preached the fourth night, back and forth, it's like seven nights. And so, man, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get with this guy, I just couldn't get with him, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't connect with him, I couldn't, I couldn't even get along with him, I tried my best just to get along with him. And finally one night he said to me, you want to go out with me after church tonight? And I said, what do you mean, what do you, what do you do? He said, the only way for me to get the anointing on me is for me to go out and just get dog crazy drunk. Well, how many of you know that that was him living in independence or him breaking his anointing? Mm. He said, man, the anointing's so strong in me that I won't even be able to sleep or function. I've got to do something fleshly to uh, get it off of me. Well, I'm going to tell you today, he's not even in the ministry no more. That other got control of him. Yeah. Independence. How many of you listen to me about independence? Amen. You cannot live in the kingdom of God unless you let Jesus be the king. Amen. And that means you're the subject. That means he's got the authority and you're under that authority. Come on. So that means I'm going to watch what I think. I'm going to learn the word of God and see what it tells me to think. I'm going to read the word of God and see what it tells me to say. Right. How many of you heard that church up in uh, Grapevine, Grapevine uh, South, South Lake, that big church up in South Lake? Gateway. They just took a minister into their church, uh, took him into the church because he would get up in his church of thousands and use cuss words. And he believed that God gave him the right and it was okay for him to get up and cuss in front of his church people. I'm talking about every kind of foul language that you can imagine. And so he was invited to preach at Gateway and Gateway found out about it and said, no, you can't come. And his, at the same time, his church fired him and Gateway brought him in to train him how to talk in this kingdom. I mean, you know, that's a nice thing. In this kingdom, you've got to speak the word. In this kingdom, you're, you're told how to think. You're told how to speak. You're told to walk by faith, walk in love, walk. How many you with me now? Say amen. When you live in this kingdom the way the king says to live, then you have the king's dominion and authority in your life. And you won't be up and down. When down tries to come, you say, no, the word of God tells me to think like this. I'm not going to think down. I'm going to think like the word of God tells me to think. And then I'm not going to talk down because the word of God tells me not to talk down. The word of God tells me to speak the word, to speak the word. 
to speak the word. You say, well, I don't feel like it. Faith is not by how you feel. Faith is based upon what God says. How many of y'all agree with that? Say amen. The enemy wants me to live by how I feel, and then he'll make me feel worse. Well, I've been there, done that enough. I don't want to go back. So I want to live under, I don't want to live in independence. I want to break away and say, this stuff doesn't work. That's an independent spirit. No, I just don't feel like that today. That's independence. I want to stay dependent on God all the time. Try it with me. I want to stay dependent on God all the time. Not in my ability to sell it. Not in my ability to fix it. Come on. Not in my ability to turn it around but on God's ability in me, in Jesus' name. Amen. Am I right? You going to say something? Uh, the first one, we have a lot of them. Uh, yeah. In my opinion, it's like, when the people, it's like, show me first, I now believe. I believe it. Yes, sir. Actually. Show me first, yeah. and I believe it. I believe it after I see it. I yes. Absolutely. I believe it after I see it. But the Bible says we got to believe it and then we see it. Absolutely right. I believe it so that I can see it. Amen. I believe it so I can see it. How do you know that that's God's way? I wish that we could say, I'm going to see it and then believe it. But God said, no, you got to believe it and then you'll see it. And y'all getting something out of this. Amen. Amen. So this is living in the kingdom. I've got to realize I'm in a kingdom. That's the most important thing in my life is the kingdom of God. When, when, when my sweetheart was in the hospital, I made sure I turned every hospital room into the kingdom of all, the presence of God in that room. When she was in ICU, I made sure I'd, I put it in there. I read the word of God. I, I, I would dance around the bed. I'd lift up my hands and praise God. I'd, I would, everything, we'd ask the nurses to pray with us. We'd ask the doctors to pray with us. We, we did everything to make sure thy kingdom come. If the kingdom comes, the will will be done. Yes. Amen. 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 Are y'all with me now? Okay, let, let's go back to some of these scriptures just a little bit because we're, we're running out of time. So I, I want to get that resentment out of the way. I want to get that rebellion out of the way. I'd rather do it myself. I want to get all that independence out of the way. In Jesus' name. All right. Let's go to Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Are you, are you with me now? Seek ye first. Everybody say first. Is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is God's way of doing it. The kingdom of God is God's dominion. God's dominion. Uh. Seek ye first the kingdom of God or his way of doing it, his way of believing it, his way of receiving it, his way of acting on it, his way, his way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Here's the, here's the blessing. All these things shall be added. Hallelujah. Added. Amen. All these things shall be added. 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 Unto us. Glory to God. How powerful is that, ladies and gentlemen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, All power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. All authority. All authority in heaven and in earth is in Jesus' power. Every, in, in heaven and in earth, all authority is his. Then he said, go ye into all the world and preach this gospel. Preach the good news that I have authority over everything in heaven and everything in earth. Preach that good news. And when you slide underneath his authority, then you have authority. When you slide underneath his authority, then you have authority. And when the enemy says, I think I've told you all about Mark uh, White, calling me on the phone trying to cast out a devil and a girl at a church and he couldn't get it to go and I, he, gave, he called me on the phone, I'm at home 
And he said, Randy, I can't get this devil out of this girl. And I said, what is the devil saying to you? He, he says, he's telling me to kiss the girl. That's what he said to me. I said, man, aren't you in a church now filled with people? He said, yeah, the pastor's here. The pastor's wife is here. All of these people are here. All of these people are praying. And he said, all I can hear is the devil telling me to kiss this girl. And I said, what the devil's doing is talking to you instead of listening to you. I hope you just heard what I just said. You're either going to be in one of two states. He's either talking to you or listening to you. And I said, put that phone up to that girl's ear. And I commanded that devil out in the name of Jesus. And then he took the phone. He said, thank you. And I said, you be sure and send our church a tithe now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he didn't do it. I'm going to have to call him on the phone. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. Why couldn't he do it? He asked me. He called me later on from the hotel. Why couldn't I do it? You, you, y'all, some of y'all know Mark White. I said, because you were listening to the enemy instead of listening to the word of God. You were listening to the devil instead of him listening to you. Now, you listen to me. When you're listening to the devil and he's winning it, you're you're losing your authority. And what's happening is you're getting emotional. You're going down. You're getting fearful. You're getting worried because you're listening to the enemy. And your, your, your ability of authority is diminishing when you're listening to the enemy. And you've got to stop and say, no, I'm going to quit listening to you. And you're going to start listening to me right now. Amen. Right now. That's right. It was the devil in that girl. He had a horrible time. Horrible time. He told me that something was pushing on the back of his head. And he was getting closer and closer. I said, man, you, oh, my God. What, what, what power would make a minister kiss a woman that he never met in front of hundreds of people in a church? It's a devil. It's a devil. I mean, you know, it's the same devil that'll push us into crazy stuff. So if you're listening to him, he's not listening to you. Y'all agree with that right there? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah to God. And he wants to put something that you can see. Because when Peter saw the wind boisterous, he began to sink. Okay. All right. Are y'all with me now? Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans chapter 14, verse 17. This is, the, this is where I've been going to get right here. Don't y'all appreciate this? Amen. I do. I just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I told the Lord that I want to see everybody healed that walks into this church for a solid year. If if it happens a year, it's going to happen from then on. And and I've got my eye on that baby right there. And I got got my eye on others. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. And and other things. How many of y'all with me about that in the name of Jesus? So I have been praying 